Hello everyone, how are you? Today, we are going to discuss about AWS EKS clusters. Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service or Amazon EKS is a managed Kubernetes service provided by Amazon Web Services. It simplifies the process of deploying, managing and scaling containerized applications using Kubernetes on AWS Cloud Platform. Keep in mind that Amazon EKS is a fully managed service, meaning AWS takes care of all the, all the control planes, uh, maintenance and upgrades, ensuring a highly available and secure Kubernetes environment. You only need to focus on deploying and managing your containerized application on the worker nodes. So overall, Amazon EKS offers a scalable, reliable and easy to use platform for running containerized application with Kubernetes on AWS. So we will spin up this EKS clusters and all its components from scratch. So if you are new to this channel, kindly like, share, subscribe and comment your thoughts. Let me know what you liked and what you didn't like. I will try to make some recommended video from you guys if you have any. So sit tight and enjoy. So we can provision EKS cluster basically in two ways. Either you want to configure your AWS credentials into your local terminal or you can spin up one EC2 instance and on that you can configure IAM user credentials and then install EKS CTL, Cube CTL, and then we will provision an EKS cluster from there. So there are two ways we can do it. We In this video, I will show you how to do that from an EC2 instance from inside an AWS account. So we have an AWS account. Within that AWS account, we will provision an EC2 instance. Before that, we will have one IAM user created with admin privileges. So basically I will create it for admin privileges, but in production environment, do not create it with admin privileges because that user only needs to uh, provision the EKS cluster. So we can give permission basically uh, to have it on only EKS clusters related to EKS clusters. But to keep it simple in this video, I have made it that this user will have an admin privilege. So within that, with that user, we will configure AWS in this uh, EC2 instance and from there we will install EKS CTL, we will install Cube CTL. What is EKS CTL? What is Cube CTL? We will go through that in our next slides. And from that we will provision one Amazon EKS cluster. So what is an EKS cluster? So EK, that also we will uh, describe in the next slide. And from that EKS cluster what we will do? We will deploy three Nginx pods by what by deploying three ec2 instances so we will deploy three ec2 instances as a node and within that node it will hold nginx pods and at last we will deploy one service so in kubernetes world it's called servit so basically it's a load balancer so with that load balancer user can access the nginx service from internet so this is very simple as an architecture diagram that I have shown you. Uh, in the next slide, I will explain what is EKS cluster and uh, what is EKS CTL, what is Cube CTL. And then on the main practical session, I will show you step by step guide how to do it in our AWS environment. Moving on to the next slide. So what is EKS? So AWS EKS or Elastic Kubernetes Service is a fully managed Kubernetes service from AWS. So Kubernetes is basically this uh, uh, launched by Google. So how to launch it in AWS or how to configure it in AWS. So for that we have a service called EKS and within that service or from that service we can manage Kubernetes or we will we can launch Kubernetes nodes and pods. So this is called EKS. Next what is kubectl? So kubectl we will use or I have already shown you that we will install kubectl. So kubectl is a command line tool for working with Kubernetes clusters. So kubectl is very much handy to have like how much pods you got or whatever nodes you got. So you can show, you can see that all with this kubectl command. Next is ekscTL. So ekscTL is a managed tool, also a command line tool for EKS clusters that automates individual tasks. So how EKS CTL works, uh, we will see in our upcoming or upcoming lessons, like uh, in the next practical session, we will see how EKS CTL works. 
we will use EKS CTL to provision one EKS clusters. I will show you how to do that. And then we will deploy Nginx pods. This I already told that we will deploy some Nginx pods and Nginx will be running on those pods and we will try to access the pods. So how can we access that? So we will use Kubernetes service or load balancer in AWS to access the Nginx from internet. So this is how uh, we will do it or this is what we will do it. Now let's go to AWS console and do it one by one. So I am in my AWS console and first of all if I see this picture here, first of all we need one IAM user to log into our EC2 instances for each case CTL and kubectl. So first of all we will create one IAM user. So what we will go, uh, we will go ahead in, in the IAM console. and then users add users so username so we we can give any username we want so i will give the username as uh, maybe kubernetes i don't want this management console this is fine so i will click on next and i will attach the policy directly and as i said to keep it very simple this video i will attach this administrative access to this user but in production, do not use administrative access. Give the user access related to AWS EKS. So that will be easier uh, for you to understand or that will be the fine grained control that we can give to a user without giving the administrative user. But to make it very simple, I will give him administrative access as of now. Then we will create, uh, click on next and then create user. So remember while we have created this user till now the access key and secret key has not been generated. Now we will go ahead inside this Kubernetes user that we have created and go to security credentials and within that security credentials we will generate some access keys. We will create command line access keys here we will select command line access keys and I will check this one that I understand the, the procedure and I want to create the access key and I click on next. and the description tag value is something optional so i will not give that so this is the one that aws access key and secret key has been created so i will copy this access key or maybe i will keep it open as of now let let, let it be open next i will create this aws ec2 instance so for that i will go to instances and then launch and launch an instance and then I will give this instance name maybe as I will create, create a Linux instance then I will uh, give it as a, a Linux name and I will select it, uh, Amazon Linux and I will choose Amazon Linux 2 and everything will be as it is I don't need a key pair because I will connect uh, this instance with AWS EC2 connect which is very convenient to use and right now this is this is these are all fine i will not change anything and i will launch the instance so my instance is launching now what we will do we will check what is the aws cli version of this so this is in pending status so i will come back when it is uh, running up and running. okay i see my instance is currently running so i will select this user uh, instance sorry and then i will connect it so i will use aws uh, ec2 instance connect and I will connect to this instance. So this is very convenient of using uh, this EC2 instance connect. Now while it is launching we can see here the public IP of the instance is this one, private IP is this one and I am directly inside this instance. What I will check first this AWS version of it. So to check that we have this AWS minus minus version. So I can see the CLI version is currently 1.18. Uh, I think this is uh, okay let me increase the font a bit I think this is fine now so I have increased the font a bit so I can see that AWS version is currently uh, 1.18.147 so which is a kind of a old version of AWS that is uh, being deployed uh, to this AMI what we will do we will install the latest version of AWS uh, CLI so to do that we have a command so we have this command curl. We are uh, going to this AWS CLI dot Amazon AWS dot com, and then we are 
uh, selecting the AWS CLI version for Linux and AWS CLI version 2. Uh, so we will enter this command and we can see that it has been downloaded. So if I do ls, I can see that AWS CLI version 2.jeep has been downloaded. So let me clear the screen and then I will unzip this version 2 file. So to do that, we have this command unzip and then AWS CLI. If you do tab, then it will automatically uh, take the uh, name of the file uh, that is uh, that is starting with AWS CLI something and we will hit enter. Then it will unzipping the file and it will install the latest CLI version from AWS. So the installation is finished now. I will again clear the screen and then we will check uh, which AWS it is taking. So the command is which AWS. I hope it is. it will be user being AWS. So we have to update it uh, for the version for the version 2. So there is a command for that. So to update this bin path, uh, we have to give this command and it will update uh, the AWS version. So now if I run AWS minus minus version, so we can see that the AWS CLI version has been updated to 2. So we are good to go. This is fine. Now we have to configure the CLI with our AWS credentials. Remember, we have created the um, IAM user for that. So to do that, we have this command AWS configure and it will ask us for our access key ID. So we go to the IA management console and copy the access key and we give it to here. Then it will ask for the secret access key. We go again to the uh, management console and then copy the secret access key. And then it will ask for the region. I will keep it as US East 1 as of now. And the output format is uh, default. Default format is fine, but we can give it as JSON. This is fine. And then we are set, we are done. So we have configured the AWS credentials for our IAM user. Now, now the next step is to download the kubectl. So how to download the kubectl? So to download the kubectl, we have one command called curl. We have this command to download this uh, kubectl. So we will now give enter and it is downloading the file. If you do ls, you will be able to see this kubectl file has been downloaded. Now what we need to do, we need to change the mode or apply the execution permission for the binary. So to do that, we have this ch mode uh, plus x, that is the execution permission, then kubectl, our file name. So we have changed now the execution permission for the file and then we have to copy this binary to a directory in, a, in our path. So to do that, we have one command. So we have this command mkdir minus p dollar home bin and copy this kubectl to our home bin folder and export this uh, home bin folder path to our uh, directory path. So this is very important to, uh, to actually export this path or set this path. Otherwise the kubectl will not work. Uh, now we will hit enter. So our path is now being set. So how to check that kubectl is installed? So now we can check what or which version of kubectl is installed. So we will check with kubectl uh, version, then minus minus sort. We will check the client of the kubectl version. So we can see that version 1.16.8 uh, uh, kubectl version has been uh, uh, installed. These are all fine. Now the time that we have to install ekctl. So to download ekctl, there is another command. So let me first clear the screen. Uh, so now we will go ahead and install our ekctl. So now we are downloading the ekctl with this command. Uh, we are doing curl here in this gitwave web works here. So this is uh, this actually this uh, website here. You see here I have opened this website. This is from this website I am downloading this uh, EKSCTL, and uh, this website is very nice. Uh, so this is the GitHub pull request I am doing. 
so I am uh, just doing this curl with this location and I am downloading the tar file of it. So if I give enter, it will download the EKCTL file. Now if I do an ls, uh, we see that, well I see there is a problem with this command. What we have given is this one and there is some gibberish. Uh, has been added with this so what we can do we can delete this one so we have this command uh, to download this ekctl uh, and i am doing this ekctl download from this github workspace github web works uh, workspace uh, so this is uh, here i am downloading the ekctl so this is very nice uh, github feature where uh, we can download the ekctl version at the command for that is this one and we are downloading in the temp folder so i will hit enter as soon as i hit enter uh, it should be downloaded so now i have to move the extracted binary to our user bin folder so how to check that or how to do that so what we can do we can do sudo then mv move from where from our temp folder uh, which file uh, so we have downloaded this as uh, ekctl so our file should be named as ekctl to where to our user bin folder user slash bin folder so this is how we move our file and then we can get the version of our ekctl so to get the version of our ekctl we have this ekctl version so if i type in we can see that our ekctl version is 0 0.143.0 now uh, there are other options we can also give that uh, eks uh, ctl help if you type in so there are lots of options how can do this eks ctl um, uh, command what can what it can do uh, you will get this command line argument here other options as well so we will not use most of the commands only the main uh, command we will use what we will do uh, we will provision an eks cluster with our eks ctl command so to provision an ekctl command uh, we have a typical uh, uh, command to do that so now let's let let me get uh, let me type in the command and i will explain uh, what is how it will how it will provision this eks cluster so this is the command to create an eks uh, cluster so i have reduced the font a bit uh, because uh, i don't know why this uh, this page actually this ec ec2 instance connect is good but somehow it uh, deletes all my commands mm, anyway. Uh, so how to do that? So ekctl is saying that create a cluster. So we are creating a cluster. The name of the cluster is dev and the region is us east one. So we are creating an eks cluster in us east one and we are giving a node group name. So what is the node group name? The node group name is standard workers. This is the node group name. So you, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, uh, you we have to give one node group name. So these are the node group name, standard workers. And the node type is T3 medium. So I am, I will, I, I'm telling that I need T3 medium EC2 instances for our nodes. And I need three, 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 T3 medium EC2 instances. And the nodes I need is minimum one and maximum four. And I need all the nodes as managed nodes. So this is how, this is a simple command to create an EKS cluster. Now, if you give enter here, so it will try to create EKS cluster. So the cluster name, uh, so it is it is saying that the deploying stack EKS dev cluster. Now, if I go back to our uh, cloud formation template, we will be able to see that once tag that should be created or it is creation is in progress, EKS dev cluster. And if we go to here, uh, let me reduce this one a bit, resources or events maybe. We can see that this node is creating this eks cluster is being created all the subnets vpc the route table elastic ip security groups all is being created creation is in progress i will stop this uh, video now and i will come back when the creation is completed because it will take some time so we see that now the eks dev cluster creation is completed uh, this one is completed now what we can do here is that we can see that the cloud it is still waiting from a response of our cloud formation stack but it is already created that's fine 
now we see that as dev cluster is creation done we we, we have see that our workers node are being created so this is in creation is in progress now we can see we can go to the resource section under resource section and we can see that eks node group uh, is being created the events uh, this is our manage node group uh, is being created uh, so this is creation still in progress uh, in the meantime what we can do we can go ahead with this our uh, management console and we can refresh this page uh, so still the node group as it is not created so it is still in progress so i will come back when the node group creation uh, is done so we see that our ekctl dev node group standard workers is also creation is complete and if i go to management console if i refresh now i can see my three worker nodes are being created now let's go to this elastic kubernetes service and if i open this eks i can see that one dev cluster is being created now if I go inside this dev clusters and I can see the navigation on the top of the screen uh, that this is my cluster and under that we have this cluster info we can see the Kubernetes version associated with it currently it is uh, 1.25 and then on the compute section if I click on the compute section and then I click on this listed node groups that is the standard worker node group under that I can see what Kubernetes version is deployed, the AMI type of my node group, the launch template that is being used, the status of my node group, the AMI release, the instance type of my node group, the launch template version, everything we can see, the status we can see, the detailed everything we can see. If I go back to again my dev and if I go to the networking tab, we will see that all the VPC that is created, the subnets associated with it, security groups, everything is created. Under the logging tab, we can see that our control panel logging information. Currently, as it is very simple, uh, just a, a demo purpose, I have not enabled any control, uh, uh, control panel log, uh, logging, but you can uh, enable that. Now, so very important thing to remember here that the control plane is an abstracted version of Kubernetes. So it is an abstract version. So there is no nothing that we can only interact with it using the command line ut utilities um, uh, on the console uh, or the console like uh, the API um, uh, call to that. It's not an EC2 instance we can log into uh, and start running this uh, Linux command into it. So what we can do, how to communicate with it is we have this EC2 instance connect still open now the EKS cluster dev region something is ready our cluster is ready so what we can do we can clear the screen and then we can try to communicate with this control plane so how to do that now first of all we want to check the cluster so how to do that we have this EKS CTL then get cluster so this is the command to get the cluster so we see that the, the cluster name is dev, the region is us east one and the EKSCTL, yes, it is created. This is fine. This is how you see the cluster. Now we have to enable it to connect to our cluster. So how to do that? We have AWS EKS, then update our cube config the name of the cluster is dev and we have to specify the region the region is us east one hit enter so this is how we enable it to connect to our cluster now we have to create a deployment on our eks cluster so as i said i will try to deploy a uh, nginx to our clusters uh, so how to do that so first of all i have this um, in my github repository so we have to curl or we have to clone this in uh, from our github repository so for that we need to install git so to install git we have this command sudo yum install minus y then git 
not heat get <laughs> okay so it will download the file and it will install it then we have to clone our depository so after installing the git uh, now we have to install uh, or now we have to clone a repository where we have this deployment descriptor i have deployed i have developed the service i have uh, developed so what we can do we can clone this repository so to make it very easy uh, i have this repository already uh, there in my uh, in my repository so i will make it uh, it is already in public i will give it in the description box as well the link so what we can do we can copy this and go here and then we have to clone this repository so first of all we will clear the screen and then git clone and then our repository now the cloning is done so we see that eks basics this repository has been cloned now what what we have to do we have to go inside this c uh, sorry what cdk cd uh, eks basics so i am inside this directory and then we have to look or we will look through this deployment file and the service file everything so first of all let's look the deployment file so we have to do cat then nginx deployment this is my deployment yaml so what i am saying that this deployment will be in our development cluster dev cluster we have three replicas of it and then the level should be dev and it will connect our port will be 80 the image will be nginx so it will download or it will deploy an nginx image and it the container port will be 80 so this is my deployment yaml now the service yaml service uh, yaml or the load balancer yaml so to view that we have to do cat then nginx nginx then service uh, svc.yaml so this is our service yaml so the name will be nginx service this is a type of load balancer and it will be port 80 it will connect to port it will or it will connect to this uh, cluster in port 80. so this is fine my service and my deployment file is fine now we have to apply this service file so how to apply so to do that we have this kubectl apply minus f and then we have to give our service yaml from our local uh, directory we have this nginx svc yaml then this is how we apply so it has been applied now we can check this or check its status how to check its uh, status so we have this kubectl and then get service so this is this this is how you get the service and we can see that this is the load balancer it has created the same thing we can view if i go back here and open up in the management console the load balancer here we can see one load balancer is being created this is how the, the load balancer is being created so we can go inside the load balancer and it is opening up so this is how this is my load balancer this is now created now we, i come back here and then what we can do uh, we can apply now the deployment so to the to apply the deployment uh, this is the same command so the command is cube ctl apply minus f and this time it is not the service file but the deployment file so nginx uh, deployment yaml so this is the deployment uh, yaml uh, and it is created so it says that it is created now the same command we will use to get the deployment is that kubectl get deployment and as soon as i give that it will show me that the nginx deployment three ready uh, three nodes are ready and uh, it will give a it, it, it will give me the pods uh, for the deployment now to view the pod 
how to give the first of all now let's go again to this load balancer and we can see that the load balancer has attached all these three instances and we again go to this uh, page here and the cluster the ec2 all my ec2 instances also are running this is a classic load balancer it has created what we can do uh, now we can view the node and we can get the node as well so first of all to get the pod we have to get the pod so to get the pod we have this command called kubectl get pod kubectl get pod so it will show me all the pod that is running for 74 seconds this pod is up this pod, this nginx pod is up and it is ready and to get the uh, node we have this kubectl get node it will show me all the nodes that is running uh, so this, these are the ec2 instances uh, for that the 30 minutes ago the ec2 instances has been node and we can also view the replica set we can give this kubectl get rs so this is my replica set this is the deployment replica set that has been created and for just two minutes uh, approximately two minutes ago it is created all fine now what we can do we can check the dns name or we can get the dns name from this load balancer as my load balancer all the service actually pointing the service all uh, pointing my ec2 instances so we can open one browser we can paste the load balancer dns and we can see that our application is running welcome to nginx so this is how my application running in kubernetes these are all fine we can also view that uh, doing the curl command here in the ec2 instance we can do the curl and then we just have to give the dns name uh, sorry this load balancer dns name as soon as we give it we see that welcome to nginx this is created so our load balancer is uh, running we can give the nodes again we can we can check the nodes again we can uh, check the pods again uh, whatever we can check the nodes again this is 30 minutes ago created we can get the pods again this is how uh, three minutes ago it is created everything everything is in order now the next thing that i wanted to show uh, is that the high availability of this eks cluster so to check that we go to this uh, management console again uh, here ec2 management console uh, sorry where my okay i think i went to load balancer so my management console is gone so in my management console what we can do we can stop the instances so i will stop all my three instances or all my three uh, nodes basically we should call it nodes so all my three nodes are being stopping right now so we will give the constant command get nodes so we see that 30 minutes ago it is still showing ready and get pod if we see uh, it is still in ready status uh, but if we come here and refresh it it will take ages to go because my nodes and pods are not there so i see that it's stopped now again let's do this one get pod and it's still showing one is ready but which is not the case but let's wait for some time and we will be able to see that new nodes are coming up now if i see that uh, if i get this kubectl get node it is showing the status is not ready even if i give this kubectl uh, git pod uh, we see that uh, one currently is in pending status the other one is in terminating status so i hope these two also will be starting in terminating status but we can see that another pod is currently going to up and running so if i hit again pod uh, so it is still in pending status uh, still pending if i go to node I see that one node currently is up for 14 seconds. My node is up. So if I go to management console, I can see that my node is currently running. One of the node is currently running, but 
let's see if my pod is running so i can see that one pod is also running and if i just refresh this page now i can still see that welcome to nginx uh, so the page again uh, loaded up so we have to wait for a couple of uh, minutes uh, till all my nodes again show up but i just wanted to show uh, that how uh, kubernetes is kind of it detects automatically that my node and pod are gone and it will reschedule the uh, uh, running of new nodes and pods uh, instantly so we don't have to take care about the uh, auto scaling uh, in in here manually so this is what i wanted to show you mm, uh, this is what is the video for uh, this is the basics video of kubernetes how to set up an eks cluster uh, in our aws environment uh, i hope you like this video uh, if you like this video kindly like share comment uh, in the uh, video itself let me know what you like and what you also didn't like uh, i will try to modify the video or i will try to come up with another solution maybe uh, from your side uh, also you can give me uh, some suggestion on which i should make video later so that you will be benefited uh, with that so i will be back with another exciting video uh, till then take care goodbye